friends, welcome back to my kitchen. In keeping with the theme of clearing out the deep freezers to make space for all of the summer garden, I am going to be making some cranberry juice today. And I'm not just going to make it, I'm going to can it for my pantry. So all I have here is about six or seven bags of frozen cranberries that I caught on sale, super cheap, right after Thanksgiving last year, and I just chucked them in the deep freezer. I washed them really well and went through them and picked out all the bad ones, picked out any stems that were left, and I'm going to add them to my heavy bottom pot. You do not want to use anything reactive like aluminum. You want a heavy bottom like stainless steel pot for this. Once I've added them to the pot, all I'm going to do next is just add an equal amount of water just to the top of the berries. One to one, basically. I'm going to give this a quick stir just to make sure I didn't miss anything or, you know, no stems are floating up to the top. And then I'm going to go ahead and put this on medium high heat. And I'm just going to check on it every now and then. I highly advise that you put a lid on your pot. Cranberries pop as they cook and they will splatter all over you and your kitchen. So just be mindful of that. Um, definitely use a lid. So I let this cook down for quite a while. It was about 30, 45 minutes, something like that. And you can see that the berries have all burst and you know the pulp has come out. Any of them that are still whole, you can kind of press. And the skin of them are so soft that by now, you know, the juice just comes out. So I'm gonna turn off my heat and I'm gonna let this cool for a little bit before I start to filter it. There are a few ways that you can filter your berries. You can use a, a dampened jelly bag, or for me, I'm just using this fine mesh strainer. And at first I thought I was just gonna dip the cranberries out. That did not work at all. <laughs> I would have been there all night. So I just ended up using my ladle and ladling it in a little at a time and letting the juice drain through, kind of mashing the berries around. And I'm not throwing that cranberry pulp away. I actually end up, I'll show you later, I put it in the dehydrator and I dry it out to make cranberry powder. And I'll just use that in smoothies or I'll mix it in when I'm doing like sweet breads or something like that. I don't want to waste any of that. There's a lot of nutrition to be had in what's left of these berries. So you can see I'm just ladling it in a little at a time. And when my strainer gets full, I just push it around until I have most of the juice out. Rinse and repeat. Now this pan is going to go into the refrigerator overnight. More sediment will settle to the bottom of the pan. And I have a neat little tool that I picked up on Amazon. It's kind of like a miniature jelly bag. Um, I'm going to use that after this has been refrigerated for 24 hours to get the rest of the sediment that settles down to the bottom out of my juice because I would like this juice to be as clear as possible inside the jar. So I'm just going to Basically pour this cranberry juice back into my heavy bottom pot. The main reason is that pot fits better in my refrigerator. I don't have a very big refrigerator, so the stainless steel pot is a slight bit shorter and I can flip the lid upside down on it and it fits in my refrigerator really well. So I'm gonna let this cool. Once it's room temperature, I'm gonna put the lid on, stick it in the refrigerator and revisit this the next day. And I'm about to show you that neat little tool that I was talking about. It fits right down in my funnel and is really handy when you're making broth or something like that that you want to just give a little bit of an extra filter to as you're putting it into the jars. I think it's fantastic and it wasn't expensive. Um, with that pulp, all I did was put it thinly spread on the fruit leather trays for my dehydrator. I put it on 158 degrees. And I turned the timer way up and I just let it go until it was dry and crispy. It took like a day. So now that my juice has been in the refrigerator overnight, I'm going to pour it into this other pan just until I start to see the fogginess. You'll notice I stopped and looked. It's because I saw that the sediment was starting to pour. So I'm going to, you'll see it start to thicken right here. That's the sediment. So I stop and I get that neat little filter that I was showing you and I just ladle it through that and you will be shocked when you see how much more fruit pulp that that thing actually catches. It's pretty amazing. 
And don't laugh at me, but I didn't have any handy helpers this day. So this is where I just picked this pot up with one hand and decided I was just going to pour it in. Ladle was going to take too long and I just couldn't be bothered. So I pour it in. You can see the juice trickling through. And I get a spoon here in just a second and I start kind of swirling it around inside of this filter. And it goes from being liquid to almost an applesauce consistency. You know, you, when you look in your pan, you can see all of the sediment, but it really is thick. And I'm really glad I did this step because I wouldn't have wanted that in the bottom of my juice jars. I'm also saving this because I put it in the freezer. I thought, you know, this is just straight up cranberry pulp. This is out of the fruit. Um, I'm not going to waste this either. And since my dehydrator was already going... I thought, oh, well, I'll just freeze this and swirl it into some muffins or something. It's going to be a nice little tart bite, you know, in a sweet muffin. So before I move on with the cranberry juice, I'm going to go ahead and get this into a bowl that's freezer safe. I'm going to label it so I don't forget what it is. Although I don't think that I would be able to forget what this is. Just looking at the color of it through the bowl. It is so bright. The camera doesn't even do it justice. So if you're wondering where I got the recipe for this, I got it off of the Bernardin website. I will post a link in the description box below where you can find the recipe. Um, there are a lot of recipes cycling right now where people are just putting water and whole cranberries in jars and canning them, and that's not approved. Cranberries are hollow, and when you can them whole like that without cooking them first, you're leaving yourself open to have bacteria hiding inside those berries. So... You know, definitely take the time to do your research and look up a tested recipe, just to be safe. But I understand it's your kitchen, your rules, so I'll get off my soapbox. So now I'm going to add some sugar. This is completely optional. I added two cups of sugar to this big old pot of cranberry juice, and then I tasted it after I mixed it up. It's still very tart. It's hardly sweet at all, but in my opinion, cranberry juice is supposed to be pretty tart, so... We're going to get this on medium high heat. I'm going to stir this until the sugar dissolves and you're not going to bring this to a boil. The recipe says to bring it to 190 degrees Fahrenheit for five minutes. Do not boil. We're not making cranberry sauce. <laughs> We're making juice. So I'm going to go ahead and give this a taste over here. You can add as much sugar to this as you like. As I was saying earlier, it's optional, but to me, this was perfect. And after my juice has been, you know, heated up to 190 degrees, I'm going to start canning this up. I'm using quart jars. You can do pints or quarts. As big as my family is, quarts just makes the most sense. Um, I'm only going to show you one here. For some reason, I ended up losing the footage of me filling a couple more jars after this, but that's okay. If you've seen one, you know what to do. I'm going to fill this all the way up to a fourth inch headspace, and then once I get it full, I'm going to go ahead and take my wooden chopstick over there, and I'm going to swish it around just to get any of the air bubbles that are stuck to the side of the jar. Now you will notice there is some foam here, and I struggled a little bit trying to make sure that I had the right headspace with the foam. I didn't know whether... The foam would settle and bring the headspace up, so I just aired it on the side of caution and went slightly under a fourth of an inch headspace. And it was perfect. Once I processed my jars and I took the rings off to check the lids and everything, it was at a fourth inch. So this foam is going to settle a little bit. You definitely want to make sure that you're either using a clean cloth or a paper towel with either some water or some white vinegar to wipe off the mouth of this jar. Even if you did not add any additional sugar to your, your juice, fruit has natural sugar. So if any of that is left on the mouth of your jar, that could impair your lid sealing. You've done a lot of work for this juice. You don't want it to be wasted. So go ahead and give it a good wipe down before you put the lid on. Put your ring on the finger tight and get it back in your water bath canner. As soon as I'm done filling all of my jars, I'll show you how many I got. I ended up with five quarts and one pint, and I had a tiny little bit left over that I poured over ice and gave to my husband. He really enjoyed it. So we're going to turn our heat up, get our lid back on our water bath canner, and when it comes to a rolling boil, we're going to process it for 15 minutes. 
That is for altitudes up to 1,000 feet. If you are above 1,000 feet altitude, you need to adjust your time. I can post a link to a altitude chart in the description box below, along with the Bernardin recipe link. Make sure you give your jars 12 to 24 hours to cool on the counter undisturbed before you remove the rings and check your seals. All of my jars sealed, and I am really happy to be adding this to my pantry storage for my family. And that's all I have for you guys today. If you're still here, I want to say thank you for watching my video. If you're new here, hi, my name is Jen. If you're into this kind of content, I hope that you subscribe and stick around. I do garden vlogs every Friday and cooking, canning, or preservation videos every Tuesday. If you guys give this cranberry juice a try, leave me a comment in the box below and let me know what you thought about it. Until next time, friends, happy cooking.